Hey, let's do a quick demo on how to use the Ruinator. I've got a cube here and I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to scale that up and uh, the scale in the Ruinator is very important. So let's come over to our items over here in the end panel. The end panel is open with this little widget guy here or the end key and uh, look at the dimensions of your object. The Ruinator works by scale. So if your object is very, very small, the Ruinator won't have any real effect. Uh, so if we take a cube like this, let's make it a little bit taller. And uh, so we've got a 45 meter cube here. Uh, let's make it a bit smaller than that. Uh, so this will be our, our object that we're going to ruin. I don't really need a camera in the scene, so we need to need that. Um, but the important thing here is after we have an object, and you can use any mesh, uh, we have to set the scale for it. So I'm gonna hit Control A to set the scale or go to Object, Apply, and apply the scale. All transforms works too. Uh, and so what that does is it makes sure that the scale is set to one and that the dimensions are the dimensions that we set. This is like delete history in Maya. All right, now what we need to do is uh, have a mesh for it. Right now it's a very simple cube or rectangle shape. So what we need to do is add some control loops. So I'm gonna hit control R and subdivide this guy. Subdivide would work too. I like to use control R so I have a more consistent topography. So um, the Ruinator does assume you know your way around Blender a little bit, uh, but not too much. All right, so we've got uh, a simple rectangle cube here with a pretty consistent topology. Uh, what we need to do next is create a vertex group that we will ruin. And so that process involves going over to the vertex groups and selecting part that we want to ruin. So I'm just gonna turn on X-ray here and use circle select C and select a part of the mesh, maybe about right here. It helps to go around a corner with the Ruinator because it uses a convex hull to generate an interior mesh. Uh, so now we have that part of the mesh selected. Let's create a vertex group and it's important to call it ruined and hit assign. And uh, just to make sure it is in fact created, I will hit AA to deselect all and then with ruin selected, I'll hit select here and indeed it is created. So uh, from there, we'll go back into object mode and turn off X-ray here and go over to geometry nodes, add a modifier and geometry nodes. Now, what we need to do is add the Ruinator. And so if you've downloaded it, let's go to append and uh, find the Ruinator file. Ruinator 7 is the current version. When I'm making this video, let's go to node tree and then inside of it, we'll see Ruinator version 7. We'll hit append. And then when you do, do that, under this uh, um, button right here, Browse Node Tree, you'll see Ruinator is now available to you. We apply it, and then we see the Ruinator has done something. Uh, but it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, but it has added the ruined mesh. If we go into wireframe mode, we see it is in fact there, where we created the vertex group. Let's go over to the Shading tab and create a hole for the ruins. And we can do that simply by adding a group that came with Ruinator. It's called the Ruinator Alpha Generator. And we'll just grab the alpha and plug it up to the alpha of our existing material. And it should cut a hole in it for you. There you go. And uh, by default in EV, uh, ray tracing is not turned on. So we'll just come over here and turn on ray tracing. Then we create a shadow inside of our structure. And this is the Ruinator in a nutshell. Uh, you just have an object here and uh, you uh, make sure it has significant polys, and then you uh, distort it. The cool thing is, after you've created this, you can come over to Weight Paint, and uh, what I do is, uh, with Weight Paint, uh, you can uh, make sure that the ruined uh, 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 vertex group is the one that's selected up here. I turn off overlays, and then you can just paint on, if your uh, brush is big enough, you should be able to paint on more ruins. Let's see here. Oh, I'm on subtract because that's where I was before. Let's make sure we're on mix and then you can paint on more ruins as needed. Or if you're on subtract, as I previously was, you can paint off the ruinator. And so that works pretty well. So that way you can feel a little bit like you're art directing the destruction. Yep. All right. So we've got uh, the facade somewhat torn off of our structure. Now, what are some of the settings in the Ruinator? Let's come back over here. Let's exit Weight Paint. Let's go into our uh, Material Preview tab. 
and uh, let's just play around with some of these settings. Come over to geometry nodes, and you'll notice that we have beams. You can change the nature of the beams, all beams on and off. Uh, beam shade smooth, uh, triangulate the beams. This is better for like spaceships and things like that. Uh, beam radius, depending on the size of your object, you might want to adjust the beam radius and also beam decay that adds a procedural alpha channel, uh, random alpha noise to the, to the um, beams, depending on what it is you're trying to make. The floors have beams by default. You can turn those on and off. And the floor spacing, depending on the structure, uh, you might want to have uh, more floors in your object. I put limits on this slider so that you don't create too many because if you create too many floors, you can create an overabundant uh, mesh and on weaker systems that can uh, cause some crashing problems. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so now we've got a basic structure here. Let's go to debris. Um, uh, the debris is generated with a uh, procedural noise uh, uh, shader, so you can change that size of that noise with the setting here. And if you know your way around geometry nodes and materials, you could always uh, step into the geometry node setup and create your own or create more varied. And in future versions, I'll have more varied materials. Uh, you can change the debris size. There's three default debris objects inside. There's a cube, an icosphere, and a grid. Uh, you can change those sizes as well. You can change their um, distortion level as well. Uh, where is that? Uh, should be a debris distortion. Oh, that's down in the distortion section. Uh, oh, no, it's right there, distort debris. You can distort the debris right there, and you can move that backwards depending on what you're trying to do. You can also scatter the debris in a wider field if need be. depending on whatever it is you're trying to ruin. Um, there's also walls in the structures in the, of, of the uh, Ruinator. You can turn those on and off or create more, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, now the pipes, uh, there is a pipe generator in here, and by default it's very thin and there isn't very many of them. If we create more, you can see how it creates like a pipe system, random pipes throughout the structure. By dragging this number up, you can create more, and uh, this slider uh, uh, switches between straight pipes and curved pipes, depending on what it is you are trying to create. Uh, and then the pipe radius, obviously, you know, thicker pipes, depending on the type of debris you're so, uh, trying to make. Pipe seed uh, just randomly redraws them in a different pattern. Uh, under distort and delete, uh, that is where you can create uh, uh, more destruction from the, the, the basic grid that you're creating here. The destruct edge threshold controls the sort of edge, as you can see here as I drag that, the edge of the destruction. Uh, and uh, and then the uh, distortion uh, level here distorts the ruin. So that way, if you need to, to look more uh, melted or um, messed up, that's what that can do. And now these uh, distort the ruins, it peaks at six here, but if you type in a higher number, you can go more extreme depending on what you're trying to do. And then the distortion scale just controls the texture that the distortion is generating from. So a higher number creates a more jagged distortion. Uh, delete the geom geometry during distort will uh, delete, depending on the settings here, let's turn off overlays, will delete the mesh as you distort it. Uh, whereas gradually delete the, the, the ruins will distort or rather delete the mesh without taking into account how much distortion there is. And that more or less is the ruinator to quickly ruin meshes. Uh, I'm going to be adding more um, features uh, in uh, future versions, uh, hopefully more op options for uh, varied debris uh, and varied materials. If you have any questions, send me an email. And uh, thanks for playing around, it, uh, around with it. I hope you enjoy uh, ruining your meshes. Uh, that's what I've been doing with it. Uh, it's really great for spaceships, but also works well for buildings uh, as well. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, again, email me if you have questions.